A sensor on an Alzheimer's patient's foot and that could prevent them from wandering. It's today's big idea. 16-year-old Kenneth Shinozuka developed it to help his grandfather, an Alzheimer's patient who has wandered away from home. It's a problem that affects more than 60% of Alzheimer's patients. Here's how Kenneth's invention works. A sensor is placed on the patient's sock. Once their foot hits the ground, an audible alert is wirelessly triggered to their caregiver's smartphone. And we should note this device took home the first prize in this year's Scientific American Science in Action Award. Kenneth Shinozuka, prize-winning inventor, joins me now. Mariette de Cristina, who is the editor of, in chief of Scientific American, who gave him that award. So let's start with you here. Kenneth, how yes. does this thing work? Uh, you've got the sock in your hand. Mm -hmm. You've also got a, hand, a smartphone there. Yes. Tell me. Sure. So it's a device that consists of a pressure sensor, a circuit right here, right. and a smartphone app. Okay. The pressure sensor is adhered to the bottom of the patient's sock, uh -huh. or it's uh, adhered to the bottom of the patient's foot. And is it just a sticker? Is that all it is? It's a sensor right here. Yeah. Right. And you just put it on any sock, or does he have to have a special You can put sock? it on any sock with Velcro in it. Okay, so you've got one on your foot, and, yes. and what happens is you'll have your smartphone, so it's right. there on that right on your right foot. Mm -hmm. If you yes. stand up, it will then send, send a signal. Right. I need to turn it on first. And then okay. once I connect it to my smartphone... Just go ahead and stand. So once you put your foot down... That's okay. Then it sends a signal. Right. And it just did that. Yes. And it says off, off the, the bed. bed on it. I don't know if we can zoom in, but it says off the bed... All right, so it's that simple. Right. How much does it cost? At, at the moment, it costs between $20 to $25 to make, and I'm planning to commercialize it soon and make it very affordable to caregivers. $25. Uh, so uh, when you look at this, Marriott, you, you uh, gave him an award for a, a very good reason, it seems like, uh, and it's successfully to something that stands out too, right? Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, Scientific American Science in Action Award is about something that can make a practical difference in people's lives almost right away. Uh -huh. And it's part of the Google Science Fair every year. And we were very impressed with the reliability of Kenneth's invention. The judges also found it quite inspiring because many millions of people suffer from Alzheimer's. Was it overwhelming when you guys were sitting there saying, hey, this is the, this is the product we're going to give the prize to? We just love seeing all of the children's mm -hmm. inventions every year. But this one really stood out for large practical scale impact and ability to put into effect almost right away. And as Kenneth's pointed out, he's mm -hmm. already working on a nice, efficient way to do it, now, eventually maybe we could bring costs down a little bit, make it more affordable for more people. So, Kenneth, you did this for your grandfather. Yes. How did this inspire you? How, How did, did it... the situation with your grandfather inspire you? Sure. So I grew up in a family with three generations, and I've always been very close to my grandfather. And when I was four years old, actually, my grandpa and I were walking in a park in Japan, and he suddenly got lost. And it was one of the scariest moments I've ever experienced. Mm -hmm. and it was also the first incident that told us that my grandfather had Alzheimer's disease. And over the years, as his condition got worse and worse, he wandered out of bed more frequently at night, which put a lot of stress on my aunt, mm -hmm. his caregiver. And seeing her struggle to take care of my grandfather, as well as seeing my grandfather suffer from accidents at night, was what really inspired me. You sing to him. I think we have that tape. Yes. I don't know if we can show like 10 seconds of that and how he sings to his grandfather. Do we have that? So, Kenneth, what is the song? What are you saying to him? What was he saying to you when he used to sing it to you as a child? So that was the song that my grandfather used to sing to me as a child. And now, in order to keep his memory alive, I sing that song to him. Uh, so it's sort of a cycle. He taught the song to me. Now I'm teaching it to him again. And what are the words? Uh, it's a Chinese song. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, it's talking about a, I believe it's talking about a bridge in China. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a very old song, uh, one that my grandfather learned when he was a child uh, back in the 1930s. Uh, what does your grandfather know about what you're doing today? It's probably tough for him, but right. he inspires you, no doubt, and he's probably with you as you are here today even talking to us. Right. Unfortunately, my grandfather's no longer lucid enough to remember uh, me, who I am, most of the members of my family and um, he's lost the ability to perform a lot of basic functions like walking, uh, talking, eating by himself. Um, so it's heartbreaking to see the effect that this disease has had on my grandfather. And if he were lucid enough to recognize me, I hope he'd be proud of the work I'm doing. If he could give you, if he said one word to you about the work you're doing, what do you think that word would be? Congratulations, or uh, it's, it's definitely keeping people safe. Um, I, I hope he'd be proud of what I'm doing. I'm sure without a doubt he is very proud of what you're thank doing. Thank you. Kenneth, thank you so much. And thank so you so much for giving him thank that you. award, Marriott. That's fantastic. Thank you both. And